Hello, and welcome to How To Astral Sorcery. This mod is, I think, perhaps one of the prettiest and most interesting magic mods out there for version 1.16.5 of Minecraft Java Edition. This magic mod is about sorcery and starlight. It lets you use the power of the heavens to give you greater control in the world around you and have absolutely awesome abilities. However, to start with, the mod's beginnings are quite humble, because they start right here, in the river. All the things you need can be found in the river to get this mod started. Well, almost all the things. The main thing you're looking for is this lovely little thing here, called Okra Marine. The other thing you're looking for is sugarcane to make paper with. With the sugarcane, you want to make a book, and you also want to make a bunch of paper. You then combine this paper with aquamarine. Four pages around one aquamarine center will give you four parchment. Then with this magical parchment, you want to put that over top of book and surround the book in the other areas with three aquamarine. And this will give you the astral tome, the guidebook to the mod. Now my astral tome has a lot going on in it. However, your copy when just starting will look like this. Also, depending on how you have things set up, you might not even need to craft yourself the Astro Tome, but I'd still recommend gathering up that Aqua Marine. Then from there, we follow through the book, covering every single section it contains. Next thing you want to do after creating the Astral Tome and gathering up some Aqua Marine shards is go find a mountainside, climb to the peak, and hopefully discover yourself one of these shrines. You want to collect most parts of these shrines around the outside. All the marble that is in it is highly valuable. Once you've gotten a decent amount, cut off the water supply at the top and knock a hole straight through the ceiling above there. Clear out any other remaining water that is spawning, just get it out of the way through whatever means you can. Then dig a hole straight down through the sea lantern. Don't damage this crystal here. However, you can take anything else within this place. I recommend looking around the corners for these chests. Inside some of them, you'll find constellation paper. It's very important to collect constellation paper, as it is quite useful for later on. Then you want to take a crafting table and place it directly underneath this crystal while the crystal has access to the sky with nothing above it. Just put it down, and the power of the crystal will turn the crafting table into a luminous crafting table. This is the basic crafting table for the rest of the Astral Sorcery mod. Collect the crafting table up, collect whatever blocks remain within the temple, such as the marble, and leaving the crystal behind and making sure to mark it so you can come back later to use the crystal. Then it's time to dig down deep into the earth for your next bit. Going down to the very bowels, the bottom, and finding yourself rock crystal ore. Mine yourself at least one of these to get some lovely rock crystals, which will be very useful for the rest of the mod. However, finding these rock crystal ores underground will be quite a rare occurrence and you have to get lucky. However, there is a better way to go about finding these rock ore crystals, and that is using the resonance wand. This is a very important item for astral sorcery, perhaps one of the most important, not only in that it assists you in finding the rock crystal ore, but also in it lets you utilize and craft and interact with most things within the mod. Fairly simple to make this wand. Marble, aquamarine, and ender pearl. Throw that all together and you get the resonating wand. Now during the day, it's not all that special. However, at night, it will show you the resonant discord of starlight and these little sparkles. Now, what these are is starlight bleeding from the ores up into the aether. That's the modulation. What it means for us and our purposes is if we dig down to the earth here, we will soon see these sparkles underground from the spot above where there was the little motes coming out of the ground. We shall reach this sparkly light area underground. And if we go to an area where without lava, where it's safe to dig, and dig down into this sparkly little area, we will find rock crystals. So a task that may seem difficult at first becomes relatively straightforward with one simple tool. Then on the mountainside that you've climbed, place down your luminous crafting table. At the current point, any spot will do as long as it's high up on a mountain so it has access to the sky. And just make sure not to cover it with any blocks overhead. 
Then open up your Astral Sorcery Tome and click on Constellations, then click back again on Research. And you'll find a whole new section called Exploration. And once we go into Exploration, we'll see a whole bunch of new things for us to explore and look at. However, most of these new things will require the Luminous Crafting Table to make. Now, this table works a little bit differently than a normal crafting table. And the Astral Tome will tell you as much in the Discovery section when you click on the Luminous Crafting Table. In fact, the Astral Tome has all of the mods information in it, so it's worthwhile reading because it will go into slightly more detail than I do. So with this table, it runs off Starlight to craft things and put them together. This means it only works at night and it has to be higher up for the starlight to actually reach it. So you can't have it low on the ground or in a valley. So even if you happen to have all the ingredients required for a recipe, if you do not have enough starlight inside the table, then it will not craft the thing. So with that said, let's get into how to craft stuff with this table. So to start with, we are going to make the glass lens. This requires a glass panel and some aquamarine. We go over to the luminous crafting table, put the glass panel in the center, aquamarine surrounds it, and it'll say this will be crafted. However, it's not going to craft it for us immediately. We need to take the resonating wand and then tap the side of the table. Then it will use up the available starlight inside it to give us the item we wish to craft. We'll do that again with a slightly more complicated recipe, making the looking glass a very important item which requires sticks, gold, wood, and the lens that we just made. So now with all the sticks in there, we need wood at the bottom, gold after that, and then glass here, and it will show us the looking glass. We tap the Lewis crafting table again, and it will start making the item for us. Brilliant, beautiful pillar of light will shine down, and now we get the looking glass. Now the looking glass allows you to find constellations in the night sky. I have already unlocked a lot of constellations, however, for you, it should look a little bit like this. A sky filled with stars, but devoid of constellations. Now, the only constellations that you can actually find with the Looking Glass are constellations that you've discovered in the constellation paper. This one here shows us Discodia. The phases of the moon shown below are at which times the constellation is actually bright enough to see in the night sky. Our Astral Tome will also show us constellations and show us which ones we have unlocked with our papers. Right now we only have Discodia and we have no information on it until we discover it. Now bringing the moon to a phase where we'll actually be able to find this constellation, we then look through the looking glass, slowly rotate around until we find a set of stars that are slightly bigger and shimmering, moving in and out of existence than the rest of the stars in the night sky. Then, using the constellation that seems to match that star, if we happen to have the right paper for it, we attempt to trace it. To do this, we hold down Shift, then right-click on the star and drag out a line to complete the correct tracery based on our memory in what is shown on the constellation paper. I believe this one is traced like this. Once you do it correctly, it will fill in the lines in blue, and now you can clearly see the star in the sky whenever it's out there. See, over there we can now see it. And that will now tell us the information in our constellation book about the star. Arma is of defense. A repulsing force comes from the light of the constellation, similar to a shield or protective barrier. And the more papers of constellation that you find, the more of these stars you can discover in the sky by looking through your looking glass and tracing them. Now that we've strained our necks by looking at the night sky for a bit, there's a few other things that we should get around to making, which are all pretty nifty within this mod. One of them is illumination powder. This is a crafting recipe, but also a useful item in and of itself, made in Luna's crafting table, like everything else I showed you. And it has its counterpart, which is nocturnal powder, which is a sort of darker version of it. Now the Luma's crafting powder is this absolutely gorgeous little thing where you throw out the powder and it flies in a sparkly little line and then it creates a torch at the location. So if you're going spelunking and you want to drop a torch down into the darkness, you throw down some powder and it'll light the way. Now as counterpart, the nocturnal powder, when thrown, leaves a trail of darkness 
and then creates a massive cloud of darkness, which will cause monsters to rapidly spawn in the area and then spread out from it. Multiple clouds can be in an area at once, although they will cause each other to dim out, so you want to have them spread out. And if you cloud an area too many times, then it'll just cease to bring monsters in. The upgrade, so to say, of the illumination powder is the cave illuminator. This is made using the illumination powder and it creates this interesting looking cuboid. And when you place this cube within a cave, it not only gives off its own small amount of light, but also slowly fill the caves full of lights from illumination powder, mapping out the paths of the tunnel without you yourself having to place the lights and slowly bring light to the darkness of the interior of the caves. It is best to put one down and then walk away and wait for it to process to fill the cave full of its lights as the process can take quite a long time if not placed correctly which is a little bit more advanced than we are at at the moment. The next thing to create is a light well. This is a device used to make liquid starlight a useful resource and is created using the Luminous Crafter. To use the light well is a pretty simple process in gathering starlight, a very important resource for the mod. All you have to do is put the light well on a high point, then put an aquamarine gem inside it, and it'll start gathering light well and slowly burn away the aquamarine until it has filled up the light well to a pretty sufficient point. And once the one aquamarine is gone, you can empty the light well and put more aquamarines in it with simple right clicks. The liquid starlight forming in the light wells can then be collected with a bucket and placed into the world. It does not act like regular water and allow you to swim it. However, it does give you a limited amount of night vision and it looks nice on the landscape. Its main use is in crafting recipes and some weird interactions within the mod such as this rock crystal of size 2, purity 2, and ritual range 1, when thrown into this pool of liquid white light, will slowly absorb the light into itself, and then eat the starlight in that location, and slightly upgrade itself. It might take several dunkings to change its side or any of its properties, but you can make the crystal bigger, as we see, size 3 now. And basically, bigger numbers is better when it comes to these crystals, as far as I can tell, and is better when it comes to all the things you can do with them. One of the first things we can craft with them is the crystal tools. These tools are made within the Lunas crafting table. Each one of them has its own recipe within the book. You can ignore the blue celestial things. They are just placeholders or alternates to the proper gems. And the tools themselves will come with their own properties depending on the properties of the gems you made the tools out of. These tools are slightly better than iron and have their own unique properties and uses that will come into play later on in the mod and also will be described within the book. After the tools, you want to make a foci resonator, an astral relay, and get yourself some glass lenses. The foci resonator requires liquid starlight to craft, but it will leave you the bucket afterwards. It also requires infused wood. You get infused wood by throwing whole logs into liquid starlight, which will instantly change them into infused wood. Now the resonator shows you areas of high starlight resonation. This appears in this weird sparkly blue mist in areas while you hold the resonator in your hand. It is a good idea to set up your luminous crafting table near areas with high resonation. Now what this resonation areas do for you is they let you have higher areas of concentrated starlight for your luminous crafting. However, putting your crafting table just into the area isn't good enough. You need to build one of these structures here. And then once it is built and the object is placed on top, you put the lens in and it'll flow the starlight out into it. The book tells you how to place these down and everything you'll be needed to do this. Now this whole process does require you to make a multi-block structure, but this is a relatively simple multi-block structure which only requires chiseled marble, marble arches, and sooty marble. Also, this multi-structure allows you to have a little stacking effect where you can sort of copy it over, get everything in adjacency, put down another relay, another lens, and both of them will relay the resonant starlight into your luminous crafting table. And this will let it charge up its starlight a little bit faster and also let it reach higher maximum power. 
And with that, we have covered everything in exploration besides the Starlight Crafting Altar upgrade. Because the Starlight Crafting Altars actually need to be upgraded to proceed with the rest of the mod. The very first level of upgrade isn't too expensive. It needs marble pillars, chiseled marble, one of these rock gems you found, a little bit of liquid starlight, and an altar to make it all in. Put the recipe into the crafting table, then tap with the resonant wand, and instead of its usual popping on top, it will sparkle about and then produce the new crafting table in the area. These crafting tables can be mined and moved, but if you have a good setup in the area you started with, you might as well keep it there, as all crafting recipes are backwards compatible. However, you might see there's this angry red light around the crafting table, and that's because they require multi-structures, which will be shown how to be created within the book and have all the resources you need within this little star. When you have all the resources gathered though, making a multi-structure can be a little bit difficult, but there is a shortcut to figuring it out. Right click with the resonating wand on your table, and then it will show you the multi-structure that needs to be made in the area. It sort of fills it out for you and lets you build layer by layer. When you put the correct block in place, it will no longer underline the area with a block. And red blocks mean that this place needs to be emptied so you can put the correct blocks in the place. And it'll sort of show you exactly what it wants in these areas. And then once you have the full structure built, it should look a little something like this and I have extra residency feeders nearby just to help power it up. And now we are on to the next chapter of the book, Attunement. Attunement gives us a whole lot more to play with, but it's still relatively straightforward if we just follow it through the easy steps. Now, as before, we are going to start with an upgrade that lets you look at the night sky, but even better, which is the telescope. The telescope is the upgrade of the looking glass. It requires gold, stick, wood, and the looking glass on top of it. Now the new crafting table, the upgrade one, is a little bit different. For one, it requires a bit more starlight power to get things done, but also it's got these little slots here. However, those aren't important for this current recipe, although you still need to build it in this table. Here we have now the telescope, and again we just tap it, and it'll shoot the starlight about, have sparkles come out of the ground, get all fueled, powered up, and it'll pop out the telescope for us. Now the telescope's a little bit different than the looking glass, as it is in a fixed place. So find a nice high peak and shove the telescope into that peak. Then the telescope lets you see constellations that are bright and dim, whereas before we could only see bright constellations, and it holds in a fixed area, making it easier for you to trace them out. So now let's look into building with this new crafting table and the extra crafting slots it has given us. The next thing we are going to be making is the linking tool. This requires aquamarine, the crystals, some sticks, and a bit of wood. Now, the oak logs, you place them just into the area that it would go if you need to continue that recipe. And then once the recipe is spilled out, you can have it completed with a stick as long as there's charge. Once the light of the stars has filled up the recipe to the appropriate level, it will show you the little symbol saying it's ready to craft. And then you pick it with your stick and it will start making the new object for you, in this case, the linking wand. The linking wand is a tool that is almost as, if not more important than the resonating wand. And right away, it has some very cool functions we can use it for. If we go back to our temple, where we initially crafted our luminous crafting table, then we can take the linking tool and right click on the crystal, and then we can direct it to send starlight to various different objects, causing transmutation. In pumpkins, it will send out a beam of starlight and over time turn the pumpkin into a cake. Several other things can also be linked and transformed, but one of the more important links to do with this is to gather up iron ore and then have starlight sent off into the iron ore to turn this iron ore into star metal ore. The star metal ore then can be mined with the iron pickaxe and placed into a furnace. Then it will melt down rather quickly into star metal ingots. These beautiful blue sparkling bars of metal. Next is the crystal lens. The crystal lens is made in the altar 
using aquamarines, quite a few glass lens, uh, stone in the center, some engraved and fused wood, which is just wood put into the crafting table and a fancy pattern, and some rune marble on the bottom. And what this lens lets you do is redirect starlight from the gems. Now because starlight can only go in straight lines, basically it lets you get around corners and also bring your starlight to farther distances away from the source gem that you have, allowing you to more evenly distribute the starlight throughout your base. A quick note on the linking tool. Whichever object you first link to is what it'll link to continually, no matter how many different objects you press on, until you scroll off the linking tool and then select it again. So if in the multi-process case of this, of linking the gem to the lens, and then linking the lens to a piece of cake, you're going to have to deselect the gem first by scrolling off, then you can go and select the lens to then direct it to its new linking location. Lenses can be put on walls and can be linked to one another. So you have many options in where to distribute your starlight and can utilize it much farther than you much otherwise would be able to without the lenses. Now let's take our starlight metal ingot and make our very first item with it, which is the starlight metal cutting tool crafted in the starlight crafting altar. Then we happen to get ourselves a little bit more of starlight ingots. We can throw those onto the ground and using the starlight cutting tool, we shift right click on the ingots and this will turn it into stardust for us. With the stardust, we can then craft the celestial gateway. When fully put together from the recipe, which can be pretty easily found within the book under the celestial gateway, you put a celestial gateway down onto the ground and right click it with a resonating wand and it'll show you the area of which you need to build this multi-block structure. Further instructions are within the book of how to set it up. Once you have the multi-block fully set up, you walk into the center and it'll create this star field for you. This star field will be useless unless you happen to have a second one set up. And once the second one has been set up, you can look at these yellow stars within the field of white sparkling stars. Hold down, left click, and it will warp you to that location. The travel is completely free and doesn't even require it to be nighttime to go through. A very useful quick travel means if you happen to not have the waystone from the waystone mod. Another thing that can be done with this stardust is creating the tools of power. There are four different wands you can make. Impulse, traversal, conversion, and formation. Formation and conversion are both very useful wands for building up structures. If you happen to have the resource in your inventory, let's say stone, then you can select the formation wand and shift left click on stone. It will then recognize that item in your inventory and let you lay down formations. You can select different formations by shift right clicking on empty terrain and this will change the modes of how it's going to create its formations out of the block as long as you have sufficient blocks in your inventory. Of course, creative mode gives you unlimited blocks. These let you build quick structures and items for easily laying out constructs. This is aligned towards the player, so it will match the player's height within the limitation of the wand's power. This draws a line from the player to its maximum range. Very useful for building quick bridges. Horizontal plane lets you lay out horizontal planes. Vertical planes lets you lay out vertical planes. You get the idea. The conversion wand is some of the same concept. Shift right click on the block that you want to convert things into, then choose the mode that you want. It has several different modes, which can be scrolled through by looking at the sky. They are different sizes, 7x7, 5x5, 9x9, 11x11, and it will convert all the blocks in that area into a new block type. Now you can actually have more than one block going at once. And what this will do is it'll attempt to mix and match them in a pattern of those blocks in the replacement. If you want to clear any of the blocks selected, left click on the sky. The two other ones, Impulse and Traversal, don't do building, but rather let you move through the world. Traversal has two modes. One is dash mode, which will use up this little starlight meter that you have, and then it will fling you in the direction that has illuminated outwards to about the maximum of that momentum's lead. The other mode is blink mode. When held down, it will draw a line and then blink you to that location. 
doing its best with a limited distance, but still far more controlled than hurtling at Ender Pearl. Impulse Wand sends out this goopy little starlight tentacle, and then it drags you to the location as best as it can until a certain amount of time wears out. You can also attach this wand to creatures and it'll drag you after them for a short while. You can also use the Traverser's Wand with the Elytra, which gives you virtually unlimited flight. Why don't we get to Attunement, the name of this chapter. Attunement is attuning items and yourself to certain constellations, as these constellation descriptions aren't just window dressing. They actually let you have more powers and do things within the world to a further extent within each constellation upon the attunement. To start attunement, you'll need to make the attunement altar. And once you've made it, you'll also want to use your resonating wand. Put down where you want it, hit it with a resonator, and it'll show you what you need to craft. Or you can simply look at the book and squint your eyes in desk work at the measurements needed. You'll also need to make yourself several spare astral relays, and you'll want to grab one of your discovered constellations in the constellation paper. We're going to have in Varso. Then with the structure completed, we are going to hold this paper in our offhand. This will make this process way easier. Then you look for all the areas with the little sparkles in the black sooty marble. You place your astral relays on these sparkly little spots. And if the moon is in the right phase, then it will line up all the little points and create a constellationary format for you and activate the attunement altar. Then you can take these ordinary rock crystals and fling them into the attunement circle, which point it will grab them and give you a spectacular light show as it focuses energy into them and it tunes it to the constellation you've chosen. This constellation is a constellation of destruction and damage, it's a little bit of a violent one, but after not too long, it will generate a newly aligned crystal. And if you get too close, then it will grab you, and it'll give you this little cutscene, and attune you to that star constellation. And once you are fully attuned and the starlight is within you, you'll find that you have a little level bar in your top left whenever you look at the astral tome. And if you look within it, you now have perks. And there's a giant perk tree for you to play with and to go through things. And they give you different bonuses and depending on which route you chose is how you'll get experience from this. Now, this though, increases your move speed and gives you XP while you're moving, but permanently increased move speed in Minecraft I find can be a little annoying. Avarice gives you extra on health and you gain experience by placing blocks. You gain experience by taking damage with Armora. I actually don't have this one unlocked over here. Leave that for you to discover. And Varso gives you plus one reach, which I love. And you gain experience by breaking blocks, another thing I love to do. And then after we break enough blocks, which can be done in creative mode or non-creative mode, we will get to a higher level. And in our perk tree, we now have perk points available for spending. And well, we have to continue from our path that we started with. But with this path here, we can go ooh, a little bit of melee or a little bit of increased mining speed and continue down the tree upgrading our paths and getting various different bigger bonuses and smaller bonuses as we continue to level up in the astral sorcery perk tree system. Now there are a few items that help you manage your perks. The simple ones, the sealing sigil and the shifting star. The seal sigil, pretty simple to make. As a bit of an odd item, but it makes sense. When you go into the perk trees, maybe you don't want to have increased mining speed for whatever reason. If you happen to have one of the seals in your inventory, one of these things over here, you can drag and drop it to a location and it will skip over that perk point so you'll no longer get the bonus. If you double click the seal, break it and give you that perk back. The shifting star, when used, allows you to unattune yourself. So you simply hold down the right click and then it'll shatter your attunement in case you want to attune yourself to one of the other core constellations, Avtest, instead. The more complicated thing to make are the gems. They give you a whole bunch of different bonuses, but to make them is a bit of a nightmare. Take a pool of starlight, throw a gem into it, and some illuminating powder. Then they will combine together in the pool of starlight, 
and make this little rock gem for you. Then you want to clear the area out around it so it can grow properly. That's what I found anyways. It'll slowly grow over time. Very, very slowly grow over time. You can then pickaxe the fully grown suckers and pick up the gems and get whatever little bonuses nuggets are contained inside them as long as you are directly holding them in your inventory or if you choose when leveling up your perks to select an empty gem slot then you can right click on this empty gem slot and put one of these gems inside there to permanently get that bonus taking it from your inventory and storing it inside your soul i suppose and that's all the self-attunement stuff, but what about the gem we just attuned? Well, if you take that gem and you make a ritual pedestal with the Starlight Crafting Altar Tier 2, then you put it down, you right-click on it with the resonating wand, it will show you how to build this multi-block structure. It can also be found within the book. Then taking a fully formed one of these suckers and the gem with it, you can then put that gem down onto a ritual altar which will then activate it and start giving off its power. This one here is a rather nasty customer, which murders entities within its aura. These can also be empowered by shining starlight into them, and then they will send out these little spikadoos everywhere. And using lenses at the very ends, you can reflect the spikes of light back into the crystal to make the ritual operate better. A whole bunch of different rituals, each one is described in their own constellation. So if we go to Averzo that we have unlocked, it'll say, here's its ritual effects. Disrupts the constellation light within the ritual, causes destruction, breaking any solid blocks except those that cannot be broken. Now if we want to see the area of control and effect that this ritual actually has, we take our good old friend, the faucet crystal, and we upgrade it into its Dominic mode, which lets us see the area of effect that a ritual actually has. And then that is all the recipes found in Attunement. And so it is now finally time to look at the Celestial Altar and how to create this sucker and into its yet again upgraded form. The Celestial Altar is fairly straightforward. Like all the other altars, you put the things into the altar and then it will upgrade. This one requiring star metal ingots, chiseled marble, marble pillars, crystal in the center, aquamarines at the toppy points, stardust has the little ears for the face that's created, you'll never unsee that now. Then, as always, tap it with the resonating wand, and it will upgrade the altar into its new form, and then tap it again with the resonating wand, and if you happen to be in creative mode and you shift right click it, then it will automatically complete the multi-block structure. If not though, then follow as usual as we've done before. Anyways, with the new Celestial Altar crafted, this now unlocks a new part and chapter within the book, Constellation. And with the new things in the book comes new craftings, new recipes, and new things to discover and look at. The Celestial Altar will take a little bit more power than the old Dari, whoever, boring crafty altar we had before. So just set up in an appropriate area and give it a little bit more juice to run on. And then you should be fine with your starlight. And there's a whole bunch of things you can make with this new altar. It also has more space to run with. And one of the first things we're going to make is the new starlight infuser. Starlight infuser kind of requires a lot of stuff. Marble pillars, gold, ruined marbles, aquamarine star metal, and liquid starlight. But once you have all the required resources gathered, you can make the new altar. And at this point, rituals actually start to look a little more cool when you complete the crafting. These little pillars of light shoot down into the thing and starts doing new stuff. And you should always be paying attention because the cool effects that go on whenever you craft something. Anyways, this will make the new altar for you to work with. And like many things, the Starlight Infuser is a multi-block structure. And as always, use the resonating wall on and it'll tell you how to complete it. This one, you actually have to start a little bit lower down and you're going to need a lot of liquid starlight gathered as you need to surround the sucker with the liquid starlight. Then there's some fairly basic uses for the starlight infuser, which allow you to create more powerful tools and a new crafting item. Aquamarine, take this beautiful little boy, stick it in there with your resonating wand, and it will slurp up the liquid starlight into the aquamarine and create the new resonating gem, which is all sparkly and flickering with light. 
Another use for the Starlight Infuser is infusing the various different tools that you've made. One of the most useful tools to infuse, especially if you're trying to level in the direction that we are, is the Crystal Pickaxe. So you take the Crystal Pickaxe, and like the gem you put inside, tap it with a wand, drink all the Starlight, but give you an infused Crystal Pickaxe and this increases its mining size. Now, all the crystal tools in Fused form gives them a slightly different bonus. The Fused Axe gives increased mining speed, the Fused Shovel increases its digging area, and the Fused Sword gives it a critical ch hit chance. So they all have their own little boons. I think the Fused Critical Pickaxe has one of the best infusements that you can get. And why it's so great is even in creative mode, it mines a slightly larger area. And when it comes to concerns of our book and breaking blocks for XP, this gives us XP a whole lot faster. The Resplendent Prism is an item that relies on baubles. When you make one, it will just give you a set of random bonuses, then you can hang the sucker around your neck. This one we have right now gives us protection. If we change it out, we can get better sweeping edge and better sharpness. And if you want to have a different resonating prismarine, you don't need to make a whole new one. Instead, you can just run the ritual again with slightly different ingredients within the whole mix match and reset your resplendent prism to a different form to give you different bonuses. Next is the tree beacon. The tree beacon is a rather cool object. What you do with it is you place it down and then you can pump starlight into it if you want to. You don't have to and it creates this little green ore around it. Then you plant samplings nearby and when the trees fully grow, Instead of becoming normal trees, they grow into these weird green, ghostly, transparent trees. Then the beacon will give you wood from the trees instead of you having to harvest them. And so it'll actually get you a passive wood farm, which in the end will produce more wood than you would get out of cutting down the trees. The illumination wand is the upgrade to the illumination powder. It actually requires the shifting star from earlier and illumination power to make. Now this wand has some interesting properties. This wand is currently set to yellow. So if we shift click, we can turn a block into a illuminated block and sort of light up the area. Or we can just click with it and place down a little light like the illumination power would allow. And you can put the illumination wand into a crafting table and dye it into a different color. And then it'll leave little blue orbs for us. And we can turn blocks into their different color counterpart instead and we can re-dye this wand as many times as we like. Let's look at the Ritual Anchor. Ritual Anchor requires glass, lenses, a bunch of other things. And in the book, it tells you how to work with this object. You may have seen I had one earlier, but I got rid of it. Now, it needs to be four above, four above the Ritual Stone. And once you get it at the correct height, you can then select another ritual anchor because it will make two put that one down in the world then using your linking tools you can select one ritual anchor connect it to the other ritual anchor this will link the rituals cause these lenses to shoot up these cool beams of light that let you know you've done it correctly and then where the anchor is being put the ritual will also occur so this ritual of death we now put a cow down in this area they'll start to murderize the cow over here crystals so until now we've had to be dealing at the whims of the gods to hopefully they put the collecting crystals in the right area but forsooth it does not need to be so for we can take a tuned rock crystal and by putting it into the table we can create our own collector crystal quite easily actually and then we can put these collector crystals wherever we want and we can use their starlight instead. So you should get some of those because then you no longer have to worry about the placement of them as much. Then after that comes the dreadful stellar refraction table, which is a rainbow nightmare. This is the crafting recipe, infused columns, pretty simple to make. And this thing here also requires an extra little block to be made with it. Well, several actually. So you take this infusion glass and you slap it onto this thing. Okay, we've got the infusion glass. Then you take a piece of parchment paper and you stick it inside the thing. Now it's activated, it's ready to run. Making sure it's nighttime, there and you see all the different things you know how to make. Now you can drag these into the piece of parchment and put them down. And then once you have three of them in there, it'll create a plate for you. 
You can take the piece of paper out. It's all lined up. It's all ready to go. You can take a tool. You can stick that tool in there. Tap it with your resonating wand or not. It just starts happening. Anyways, laser will start to shoot your tool. And then they'll enchant it using the properties of the sheet you gave it. So this one has mending efficiency, scorching heat, and increased mining speed. And then we can take it out and operate with this new pick. And it'll enchant all the items. And I believe the enchantments shall stay consistent, though this is a way to get guaranteed enchantments once you've figured out the right patterns and combinations to work with. Also underneath the constellations information in the book, it tells you the effects that the refraction table will have on the items for their specific constellations. The next thing for us to make in this how-to is the crystal prism. The crystal prism is made rather expensively, but unlike the crystal lens that when reflecting lights from one of these crystals, it can only link one target. So we can only send it to a certain point. However, that is not so with the crystal prism. When we link this bad boy up, it can link to multiple locations with its starlight. Instead of just having the one, it can go to as many locations as you like. Although it does disperse the starlight, making it slightly leaker. And can contain with the theme of lenses, there is also a new kind of lens to be made. They're all contained within Constellation, and it is the colored lenses. They all have their own uses. It tells you what each lens does, and these are really cool. So each has their own effect that you can read up on. And what you do is you make the lens, then you get yourself a crystal lens or a prism lens, and then you take one of these colored lenses, and then you can put them onto these lenses, switch and match them as you like, in case you don't like the color. And when starlight is shone through them, each has its own effect. So this blue one is a repulsor, so it pushes things away. So you can make an elevator out of it. So there we go, I have an elevator, or I can get pushed this way pretty forcefully. And the yellow light is breaking. So using the linking tool, I can basically say, bore me a tunnel this way. And then it's going to go, all right, boss. It's going to start shining a light. It's going to break all the blocks in between until it's broken through and broken that block. Although we are using up quite a bit of its energy, so it's having difficulties doing the breaking. And so you can get a whole bunch of different things going on and set them up with all your different lenses, which I think is very cool. And for the final part of this chapter, crystal clusters. Now crystal clusters, they're much like our other crystals that we had to go with. So how it works is you have yourself a pool of starlight and this time, instead of using the yellow powder, you throw the stardust in. So you throw your crystal in, and you mix in the stardust, then it'll boil away the result and create this little crystal on the ground here. We want to clear up the space around it so it has room to grow. And then you can accelerate its growth rate by using a linking tool on the crystal to link up some starlight. But also they like to grow on starlight metal. So what you want to do here is you also want to grab the linking tool and fire it down at the starlight metal as well. And there'll be enough space. So it'll constantly convert the iron ore into the starlight metal, which then the crystal will drain for its growth until it's fully grown. Which can then be mined with a crystal pickaxe, or a normal pickaxe, I guess, which will give you the celestial crystal, which is the more upgraded, more powerful form of your old gems. And then using this, you can create the final altar, the iridescent altar, this bad boy here. So make sure that it is nighttime, then head over to your crafting altar and make this new iridescent altar. Just need to wait for it to fully charge up to say that it's ready to make. Then we tap it with our resonating wand. It goes all swirly, light shines in, and boom, we've got the iridescent altar, which requires a rather complex mega structure to build. It has these little extra things around it and it'll come with this little spark above it. And this one crafts slightly differently than we are used to till this point. It also unlocks the final page in the book, which is called Radiance. And we're going to go over the slightly new crafting that we have to do with this. So we are going to make a new item. It's one of the main items. It's called the Mantle of the Stars. So you get yourself all the required things, your rock crystal, your leather tunic, all your sparkly dust. You go over to the table. I want to make this thing. It's like, okay, yeah, I can make it. It's all in there. However, you might notice in the recipe the Mantle of the Star has these weird floating things around it. What's that about? 
You want to lay down all around your altar these astral relays into the sooty marble. Then, when you start the ritual with the resonation of your wands, it'll go all sparkly, hey diddle diddle. And then, after a short while, it'll highlight one of those weird extra items. So what you do is you get yourself that item, and you put it into the relay. And then, you'll think for a bit, until you put another one of those items into a different relay. Do a little bit of chugging, and then it'll let you know, ah, put a feather into this relay. So you put a feather down to that new relay, and then it finds its final relay with the ender pearl. So here, we'll put that down, and then it has everything it needs to complete the recipe. And it'll start powering up using all of its starlight, and it'll summon the mantle for you. Now, these things get very hard to charge at this point, so I have set up uh, these Discone Collector Crystals in an area around it, all far enough away from each other so they don't conflict, because if you put crystals too close to each other, they get angry and shoot lightning at each other, and it weakens both of them. So you have to have a good distance, but then I just use the linking tool, fire starlight directly into the air just an altar to help power it up, so I can make the more advanced items like the mantle. So, once you have the Mantle of Stars, you go to Constellations, and you choose which one you want the Mantle to be aligned to, you flip through the pages, it'll tell you, put the Mantle of Stars in there, line it up, and you'll get this line Mantle of Stars. But what's this? What's this little star thing in there? Well, you have to take a gem of the correct alignment and put it into this little sucker up here. And we're going to show that off with the Lucerian Crystal. Now at this point, there are actually some faint stars in the sky as well you can discover. They're a little bit hard to find if you have the correct pages, but in the constellations, we got all the bright stars, then we got these stars, and then we start getting some fainter ones like Lucerian. Um, now this is a dimmer light, whereas these ones are bright. So it's slightly harder to find, but we can still find it with the telescope when we look up at night right now. Get out the old looking glass, and then we can go looking for the dim ones out there. and draw in and connect all the dots and then we can create a new recipe here and this one takes a little bit to do but once we have the loosening or a crystal aligned because we need to do that sort of astral alignment with our crystals you'll have to do that quite often it's not too bad of a fate then we're going to need a lot of gold we're going to need lenses infused glass and some other extra things then we go over here we go okay what can i use this for ah yes i can make the observatory but wait it doesn't work that's because it needs the lucerin crystal inside and then you put the lucerin crystal and it'll highlight this whole little area here with the lucerin then you activate the altar with the resonance wand and fill in the little nodes around the sides to get the rest of you completed and, and while you're at it you can enjoy the light show that's going on Eventually the observatory will be crafted, which is what we're looking for, and you have to put this down in a free area of which it, nothing is above it obstructing its view of the night sky. Like this observatory. And now it lets us see all the stars, any that we discovered, but not just the bright or the dim, for we have discovered faint stars out there to find within the scrolls, and this really helps you just find all the stars. It is absolutely brilliant for star watching. And there's just a few things left then in Radiance, the final chapter. So there's the Iridian star, which basically lets you change your level type. So you're like, oh, I actually don't want to be a breaky breaky boy. I'd rather be a runny runny boy. So you can change it with these things. There is Modified Enchantment Atonement, which remember over here, We've got this thing that's destroying the whole area. So if we take this crystal and you go yoink, we can use Arculus, the hammer, has to be the right time though. Shift the moon in the sky, okay, now that's the correct moon symbol. We take this and we go that there, that there, that there, that there. That one's already there. Get that one there, that one there. That lines up this hammer. Then if we take an already aligned inversal crystal that we happen to have, and we get that one aligned, it will now corrupt the gem. We get this Inverso Crystal, which has been modified to have a new and enhanced form. And then when we put it into the spot where we had a ritual going on, it's now a corrupted inverted form, which are talked about in constellations. You can do a ritual, and then there's the corrupted ritual, 
And this corrupted ritual will fill the whole area around the Inverto, which used to decay things and fill it up with stone now. And so instead of destroying the world, it uh, builds a new one. And you can sort of build platforms with the extended ritual here. But finally, there's only a few things left. First, we have the Containment Chalice. It's one of these things here. One of the main things you do with them is they can just contain a whole lot of liquid. So if you happen to have yourself pools of starlight, you put the containment chalice nearby and the pools will start firing to the containment chalice and then you can take a bucket and you can scoop out the containment chalice you can also directly put resources into the containment chalice and it's, i think it holds 64 units so you can fill it as a reservoir and you can put pipes into it and the like and if there's no redstone signal around it and you have two of different types they'll actually create blocks so this stuff is really cold this stuff is water so they fire together they create ice then you activate a simple redstone signal next to your chalices and they'll no longer activate. The other shifting fountain is a crazy prime ritual thing, which has the Fusidim prime and the Necromonic prime, which is linked to the Isonatic Resonator final upgrade, which is crafted as so. And this final upgrade is related to the Necromatic, which basically sends a giant bore of energy into the earth to look for liquid and they'll draw it up and you use the ISO to find it. So if we have to grab ourselves the ISO and turn it to green mode and we have it at night time, then using this resonator in green mode, we wander about looking for founts of liquid. There we go. See, there's lava. So this is liquid that's leaked through the world and is trapped beneath the bedrock. However, using the necromatic bore, we can recover said liquid. Now, you don't actually need to use the bore for the liquid recovery because you can use it for something pretty cool here, which is once you have the necromatic prime and you set up this multi-block structure with the ever-shifting fountain and setting up by looking through this thing, then you put a containment chalice on top, put the necromatic prime on the bottom, you fill the chalice with liquid starlight and it shall activate the Prima using the starlight as its power source. And once it's ready to go, it'll shoot a laser straight down into the earth and annihilate a boar down to bedrock directly to that liquid fount if it happens to be down there and then it can get sucked up into the whole system. If not, you just get a massive hole and you basically shoot a sky laser into the depths of the ground, which just looks freaking epic. Now the Fuchsia Prima basically the other kind of Prima, Fossilizic Primer, I don't know, Fossilian Prime, I like using fancy words, I don't mean anything. You put that down and you power it, and then it creates an aura around the whole area which freezes mobs in place. So, zombie. It's going to suck the zombie into it and contain the zombie in place, so all creatures in the area are going to get sucked up and contained near the primer but even epic creatures such as ender dragon are contained by this so if you want to have yourself a pet ender dragon trapped you can trap it with this although it burns through power the more creatures the more powerful creature trapped inside it but you can in fact grab yourself a ender dragon with this prime basically a giant creature prison so yeah that is how to astral sorcery so, thank you very much for joining me in this mod guide to Astral Sorcery. I hope you found it useful. Uh, we've got another thing coming in the future, hopefully, depending on my studying and schedule time. Uh, Beyond the Veil, which should be QM. As it stands, that's it for the Astral Sorcery. I hope this how-to was useful to you. I generally do. And let me know if you think of any other ideas or suggestions for how-tos to make. And I might get to them eventually. We'll see. But as it stands, I'm going to leave it there. Until next time, goodbye.